Good morning. I would like to call this meeting to order. Thank you for joining us during our weekly hybrid MS breakfast meeting. My name is Tate Chan, and I am your May program chair. Now help me welcome our moderator for today's affiliate panel, Derek Tobert of First Eye Management Services, who will be introducing our panelists. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Good. That doesn't sound very good. Come on, guys. How are you doing today? It's a great Thursday. All right. So we are up for an amazing panel from this great panel of lenders here. So um, first, I'm going to let I'm going to announce everybody and let them introduce themselves. So first, we have Judy Chow from AAA Capital Investments. Good morning, I'm Judy. I've been doing uh, mortgage loan for over 30 years. I don't want to tell my age, but over 30 years <laughs> and for, for so spectrum alone, including commercial. And uh, I speak Chinese and uh, I graduated from UCLA. And I'm so happy today to share with you some of the current rates and the trend in the interest in mortgage loan. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. She's been doing it since she was five years old. You hear that, guys? <laughs> All right. And next we have Mario Mancinia from Rate One Financial. Go ahead. Well, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Mario. I so saw you know me already. I've been in the business for over 20 years now. I also have been an educator and still teach classes sometimes at Pasadena City College. Uh, I have helped many people into home ownership over the last few years, specializing in reverse mortgages. Graduated from La Salle High School in Pasadena, attended UCLA and got a degree in economics and uh, business and economics from Cal State University, Los Angeles. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mario. And next we have Cosmo Sanchez from New Aim Funding. Good morning, everybody. My name is Cosmo, and uh, we work as an independent broker. So we help people who are first time home buyers, FHA, conventional, all the way to people who are doing bank statement loans, um, investors, DACR loans. That's pretty much it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Cosmo. And last but certainly not least, we have Ken Shen from Trans Global Private Lending. Yes, good morning, everyone. My name is Ken Shen, and I've been in the banking and lending industry for more than 10 years. And I go to USC. I graduated from USC. <laughs> yeah, and I'm here today to um, talk about the bridge loan and how, how it can help the borrowers and the buyers, especially the agents. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Those were great introductions there. So we have some questions here for you guys. And at the end, we will take some questions from the audience as well. So the first question is gonna be for Judy Chow. The question is, what are the varieties of loans from 5% to 10% interest rates? Okay, so I'll start with the 5%. What interest rate, today's market are 5%. 15 year fixed are in the fives. And also we have some preferred client loan, where you have to make deposit with the bank. They're in the fives. 5%. But mainly, I would say 75% of portfolio are between the interest rate of six to seven in the six and sevens. So your buyer needs to know it's not going to go down to two and three. So what happened in 2020 March is when the Federal Reserve decided to help with the mortgage best security. They uh, initially in March put wanted to put in $200 million, billion, sorry, billion dollars to buy mortgage backed security. Well, they continue to buy because the pandemic was still on until uh, early part of 2022. So they totally spent close to 700 billion to buy mortgage security, back security. That's why your interest rate went in the twos and threes. But that was a, not a normal time. And we don't expect another pandemic. We hope not. So a lot of your buyers say, I'm waiting for the rate. You know, they say, why is it seven? But you should probably tell them seven is, the, is a good rate. They should buy a seven. If they keep on waiting, the house is going to go up three to 5% a year, maybe more, you'll actually lose out. The rate will not go back to that two and three unless we have a pandemic, which we don't want. So that's the rate takeaways that you should tell your buyer to go ahead and buy um, use six and seven. That's a good rate. And um, how about eight rates above that eight, nines and tens. So if your buyer um, doesn't have such a good credit, or they have no income documentation, the rates are in the A's, nines, and 10. Well, I think Ken will talk about it. We have bridge loan, 9.99, closed in seven days, 20% down, but they're 9.99. So these are really quick loan to do. Um, so there's always a loan for a person, so buyer. 
just need to know what their background qualification is. So our goal is to get you the money for your buyer. And you should really um, tell your buyer to um, you know, take a loan now and go buy the house. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Judy. Um, so next, our next question is from Mario. Um, can you tell us what are the advantages and benefits of a reverse mortgage? Uh, yes, there are quite a, a lot of advantages. First and foremost, keep in mind that your clients, they become a fan of you when you help them. And many of them may not move, but I can tell you from the experience that I have had, the realtors that have recommended clients for them to stay in their home, they have passed, unfortunately. Guess who's the, who sells their home? the realtor that's recommended. So there is something there. When you make a difference to someone, they will remember you. They become your client, not your customer. So that's number one. The next thing, that's a benefit for the realtor, okay? And I, I get referrals from realtors uh, quite a bit. Uh, also, keep in mind that several hundred thousands of homeowners, the growing population of seniors over 62 is growing at 10,000 per day. Uh, in, in, uh, in for the next few years. So this could include even your family members. And here's what's really happening. And I'll go over the benefits real quick. Actually, reverse mortgages, that's not the real name. It's called home equity conversion mortgage, tax-free money. People don't even know that. So there is one of the advantages. The second advantage is there is no mortgage payment. Some of them have paid off their homes and they need money for guess what? Long-term care. You know how expensive that is, healthcare? Most of them have their kids already grown and gone to other places and nobody takes care of them. Not even their own sons when they get to finance in that kind of stuff or even traveling and getting financial independence. So there is a lot of benefits. Another, it's uh, no minimum credit. There is no minimum credit standards for that. There is uh, no employment requirements. They're a lot easier to qualify than regular loans. They only need a social security and little income and that's it. You know, uh, <coughs> since there's no mortgage payment, tax-free cash, and it, it helps them a lot in retirement and strategic planning overall for the rest of their lives. Wow. So there is a lot of benefits that come with reverse mortgages that people don't even know. And the next thing that I will mention is the last one. This creates a lot of confusion. Oh, I got a reverse mortgage. Now the bank owns my house. Absolutely none. That's a myth and that's a misunderstanding because it, you can have a living trust just like a regular loan or you can have it on your own title or the husband and wife's title. So the bank does not own the, the property. And when the persons die or sell, they just pay off the loan just like a regular loan and the equity goes to their kids. Wow, wow. Thank you so much for that, Mario. And our next question is for Cosmo. Home prices are continuing to rise. Interest rates have not gone down. When can we expect interest rates to drop? All right, that's the million dollar question, right? And I bet you, your clients, your buyers ask you that. Um, I think it's a great question and it's, it's relevant on so many levels when we think about it, right? When you're going to the grocery store, you wanna buy some um, milk and eggs, you wanna buy some bread, you're looking to buy a car, or you're looking to plan a vacation, or in our situation, you're looking to help your clients buy real estate, right? Rates are so high, and the reasons why that they're high, that the feds are, are citing, are because um, the amount of jobs that are being created, the, the, the sale of service and goods, and the worldwide economy, and there's so many other factors, right? And I don't want to bore you guys with a bunch of charts or what have you. What we do know is that the rates are high and what can we really do about it? Well, they're expecting, they're guessing that the rates are gonna go down within 12 months from now. We heard that story before, right? Raise your hand, have you heard that the rates are gonna go down? Have they gone down really? No, they have not gone down, right? And that's tough for everyone here. And it's not just in real estate. Um, they're guessing that the rates are gonna go down about 12 months, but we know what I tell my, my, my buyers and I tell my realtors that what's important right now is for us to get creative. You know, you heard Mar Mario, you, you heard Judy, you're gonna hear um, Ken. There's so many ways that we could get creative to help our, our, our people take advantage 
and buy some real estate. Amazing, amazing. Thank you, Cosmo. And our question for Ken, what is a bridge loan and how does it differ from regular mortgage and stated income mortgage? Okay, so just like uh, I not, uh, Judy has mentioned, uh, so basically there are three types of loan. One is the regular A paper loan where you show um, W-2 and a tax return. And then we have the state of income where uh, you try to provide more documents to prove that you have such income. And third category is what we call the bridge loan. And you could heard about bridge loan, private lending, high money loan. They actually all kind of be belong to the same category. The, the thing about the bridge loan is that first, first thing is, it is a short-term loan. It's about three months can be all the way to one year to two year. And more and more people, especially the buyer, are looking at the short-term loan is because of the interest rate. The rate is not so stable right now. So they wanted to do a short-term loan and then they re refinance with, with the mortgage lens later. And also it is the asset-based loan. So usually we just look at the equity of the property. That's why, because we have the equity, we don't need a lot of documents. That's, that's the, all, the, the difference. And also you can close quick. You usually close within uh, 10 business days. That's why a lot of people, when, when they wanna be a, when, especially in this market, a lot of cash buyers, but sometimes you really don't have such cash. So they come to the bridge loan for help. They wanted to do a cash equivalent offer. That way it's, it's kind of competitive with the cash offer and they can get some loan with them. Thanks. Thank you, Ken. All right, we're gonna go back to Judy now and we kind of got to run through these quickly. We're running low on time. So can you briefly explain the difference between a full doc and an easy doc loan? I think I already talked fast. We'll talk faster? <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so to make it simple, there's the full doc and there's the easy document loan. The full doc is very simple, two years W-2 or tax and or tax return. So people have that, we can figure out how much they can qualify. But if they don't have it, we have the easy doc. Easy doc has two types. One is alternative doc. Um, I tell you what they provide. Uh, they can do any one of these. Um, fast closings to seven days to 15 days. Bank statements or profit and loss or asset depletion, something like Kintot, they have a lot of asset. We do asset depletion calculation or, um, written VOE, they can get it from their employer. Those are the alternative doc. And another one is completely no income. You don't have to have the job, no job. So how do you qualify? Um, you basically have some reserve money asset. And also you can buy investment property. The income from the investment from the rent can qualify for the loan. Mm. Is that fast enough? Yeah, yeah, that was good. Short and sweet, I love it, I love you it. A, you have a test after this, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you for that. Um, next, we have Mario. Uh, what, are, what are the basic eligibility requirements for a reverse mortgage? They're fairly simple. First, uh, uh, they don't, they don't, you don't need to have uh, tax returns, anything like that. First is age 62. The, the, is the uh, reverse mortgages are based on age and equity, period. You know, the older you are, the more you get. So if you're at the minimum of the 62, you're going to get less that is somebody that gets it at 70. You're going to get a lot more, okay, a lot more money. And again, it's tax-free, and it's crazy that our line of credit, and that line of credit grows at 8% per year. When have you heard of that? You have a 300,000 line of credit. Next year, it's not 300,000. It's 8% more. Mm -hmm. And this, this is why... It, uh, I, I think that some of the institutions don't want to do the loans because they think it's high risk. But anyway, that's an opinion, that one. Uh, so that's one of the eligibility. It's easier to qualify, had to be 62. Primary residence is not for investors. However, if you have a duplex, you sell your home, downsize, and you buy a duplex, put 50% down, no mortgage payment. Now get this as, if, as a real... Uh, uh, you get you help somebody get income and no mortgage payment on a new home. So mm. these kind of things are something that we can help you with. And also uh, oh. the loan terms are fairly easy. They all get what they're going to get. That's how they make a decision. So their legibilities are a lot easier the worse than regular loans. Age and equity. So you just keep that in mind. Age and equity. Yes, keep that in mind. Thank you so much for that, Mario. Um, our next question is for Cosmo. How can current homeowners upgrade their primary home and increase their real estate investments in today's challenging market? Okay, awesome. So I'm going to give you guys an example, right, to really kind of comprehend what we're getting at with this. 
So, so basically, we're going to use something called departure residence to help your clients either upgrade or downgrade, right? So let's say, for example, you help a married couple buy a home two years ago. You know, it's just them, husband and wife. Now they have a child, right? And now they would like to buy a second home. What they could do is departure residence. They could depart from that property that they own right now, rent that property out. And because they're upgrading, the bank is going to allow them to basically be almost like a first-time home buyer, which is what? Use a product of FHA, 3.5% down. Use a conventional loan of 5% down. Or use whatever product you want to in order to qualify for um, a, a upgrade, right? What are the benefits of this? There's a big difference between an interest rate for a primary home, right, or investment home. Investment homes are what? Higher interest rate. And you have to put a minimum down of what? 20%, right? So this is a huge benefit for your clients. This is something you definitely want to bring up to them. And when I talk to people, when I get referrals, I say, hey, what are you trying to accomplish? This comes up. Now, this also works the opposite way. What do I mean by that is, let's say, for example, you have empty nesters, right? Someone who's looking to downgrade now. Um, big home, a lot of time and money to clean the home. They want to live closer to their, their, their children or what have you. They could do departure residence the opposite now. They could vacate that larger home, buy a smaller home, and still take advantage of a lower interest rate and a lower down payment and still use those products, right, that we know, FHA, conventional, whatever they want to do, right, and they get a better rate. So that's a great way to help your clients increase their real estate and also take advantage of a lower interest rate and a lower down payment. Wow, thank you, thank you. That's some good information there. Um, next, we have Ken. Um, how can a bridge loan help current borrow borrowers? Okay, so I know um, many of you um, are very experienced agents. We know that uh, you, usually, even though sometimes the lenders guarantee that there's no problem with the loan, but sometimes out of the blue, there still may be problem. And the agents will get only get paid when the house is closed, right? And we already have a committed buyer, but the, the loan fails. So that's when bridge loan come into play. So when, when you talk to loan officer, you want uh, to, to use bridge loan as a backup plan in case anything happens. Because, because uh, things might happen because uh, due to the source of fund, uh, not, not non seasoning of fund of the credit score, or there are different types of late payments or any other reasons. That's when the bridge loan can come in and save the deal. Oh, I like it. Thank you. Thank you. So now for our final question, before we get to the audience for your guys' questions, yes. um, for Judy, can you tell us about loans for foreigners? Uh, yes, uh, we get about 25% inquiry, mostly people from China, some from Vietnam, Cambodian, they're foreigners. They don't have U.S. citizen. They don't have permanent residency. Um, there's basically three types of loan we offer it for. Well, also sometimes they have a EAD work, uh, work employment car, that's a gong car, or I-10. So we have the no job, you don't need a job, and we have the investment property based on the income of the investment they can buy here. And we have what they call a written verification employment even for job overseas. So those are the loans for uh, foreigners that we have. Okay, thank you. Awesome, thank you, thank you. And Mario, um, when you guys are coming up with this reverse mortgage, you're, you're working on this, is this based on math or emotion? It's actually both because the emotion comes, oh my gosh, now I have a loan and a reverse mortgage. So how, what are my kids going to get, right? The inheritance portion of it. And they say, wait a minute, whose life are you doing? Are the kids helping you? And in many of them, I just want to say, the all they have in common they're 62 or older they want to get cash from their home because they need it for their own life sometimes or or uh, health care uh, many clients proceed to pay off mortgages let me give you a quick example i just finished one an 83 year old man doing being a taxi driver because they still have a mortgage for 10 more years to pay give me a break we have to realize that we no one is permanent life has to move on what are you gonna take this when you pass away come on so enjoy your life really what it could comes to i i think i'm gonna quote this the best thing money can buy is financial freedom rob Berger said that mm. so use those tools 
to create your own life. It's not really about the loan. Sometimes if you have a lot of assets that can pay for the loan, who cares then? You don't need a reverse mortgage. But in many instances, most of the clients, they're driving for, they need cash. Wow. And it's tax free. So keep that in mind. It, it becomes both emotional and this. And it's and, also and, math. And math. But you get wow. the math. You will know what you're going to get before you make that decision. So you know what you're getting. It's not like, okay, you know it and you can make that decision. This is for us. And you can discuss that with your counselors. One more, they all have to go through a HUD approved counseling session because okay. they are very protective. The government is very protective. These guys are, we give them a list. They pick who they're gonna contact and they have the numbers. They contact all of their concerns and questions. They're a third neutral party. We don't know them. They don't know us. All reverse mortgages have to go through. They have to get a certificate. Let's make sure we have time for the other questions. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You can, you can make sure you talk to all of these guys afterwards. They can go further in detail about everything. All right, Cosmo, um, what are some ways that current homeowners can leverage the equity in their properties? Okay, so right now, when a client has a 3% interest rate, do they want to refinance to take money out of their home? No, right? They want to hold on to that 3% interest rate. Some people have a 2% interest rate, right? Crazy. You think they're going to let that go? They're not going to let that go, right? That's part of the problem is that they don't want to sell their home because the rate's so low. And they buy a home today, rates higher, and what? Property taxes, right? So a way that a tool that they could use is a home equity line of credit. And a lot of my clients right now, they're keeping that first at 3%. But they're getting a line of credit on the side. You know what they're doing? They're buying homes. Because we know right now that the people that could buy in this tough, turbulent market are going to be the winners, right? Because every time so the rate goes down, you got more people who qualify. You got more competition. And so make sure you mention to your clients that, you know, they don't have to touch that, that, that first, right? That 3%, that they could go and get a line of credit and take advantage of, of today's market. Wow, that's strategic. I love to hear it. All right, and Ken, this is the final question before we pass it off to the audience. How can a bridge loan help realtors? Okay, so a uh, bridge loan is very good tool to help realtor. First of all, you could, like I said, it's a, you can use it as a cash equivalent offer. So usually uh, we have clients, I mean, uh, agents, they can, because of the short-term uh, financing, they can do a 15-day escrow and no loan contingency. You can't use that kind of offer to, to bid for the, the competitive market. And also, uh, just like I mentioned, uh, you can save the escrow. So in, if any other loans fails, then we use that to save the escrow. And most importantly, because we can fund uh, nationwide. So if you have other investors in different states, you can also refer us for marketing fee. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. So that's all the questions that we have up here for the panel. Um, next, we will take just maybe a couple of questions from the audience. So do any of you guys have a question that you would like to ask any of these very knowledgeable lenders? Okay, yeah, open your, open your books to page. Oh, please come forward to the mic. Um, let me grab another mic for you too. It's that way so the people on Zoom can hear you as well. You wanna make sure everybody gets to experience this. Hello, um, does any one of you offer the uh, community lending program? It's called community lending loan, community lending program in some specified area. Microphone. Uh, I guess there was, um, you have to check the address. It just, it's not that you're gonna buy. I just finished one in Montebello. I'm surprised that's under the community loan program. What that does, they give 4,500, up to $4,500 credit to the buyer for the closing cost or to the broker. So that is, uh, has to be a specified address. There's a map for those community loans. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah that's, that's okay. not, every, not every lender. There's not every lender, well, we have it, but it's not every, it's the, the property itself. It's a pretty much, it's a full doc program. So it's based on the property, not the lender yeah. for those on Zoom. All right, are there any more questions? I think we have time for maybe one more, but no questions. You guys must plan on talking to them afterwards. All right, yeah, can you come up to the mic? I represented a buyer recently, and uh, it was a conventional loan and good credit. So the question is, how does the lender factors in when they give an option to the buyer, whether 
you have to pay origination fee or it's going to be a higher rate. So what are the things that you guys take into consideration? Like for example, the origination fee was $10,000 more, or either you pay that or you get a, you pay that or you get a higher interest rate. So how does the lenders factors in those situations? And when does the buyers, whether they choose one or the other one, how does that breaks in? For example, okay, if it's ten thousand dollar, you're gonna pay a lower rate. I'm gonna break in four years, five years into the loan. Does that make sense? Yeah, and 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 you can let me know, Tomas, if I answer in your question. Um, so basically, whenever I quote a client an uh, interest rate, I always quote them what's par, right? What basically par means that it's they're not paying for the rate. They're not buying down. This is the real raw rate, right? For example, let's just say. 7.5%, right? 7.5%. Now, if they choose to buy it down or they want a lower rate, then that's when I say there's an origination fee to that. But I always quote what's raw, you know, just, you know, at par. Then, it, then you know, I give them the option if you would like to buy down, here's some buy down option. Does that answer your question? Yes, but okay. how do you guys factor in? How do you guys do the break math? Even. The break even. Usually, usually the between... Um, I would say above five years, maybe seven years to break even. So if they keep the loan, oh, that's what that, he meant. That, that was my question. Yeah. Okay. So I they mean, keep anyone, the loan. Can do the it's math. a, it's you can just do the math, but basically it's five to seven years. So a lot of them don't want to pay the point because they think, well, it's going to get lower, or I'm going to move on. I don't want to pay ten thousand yeah, dollars. I would say most buyer that I deal with, they don't like to pay points. They rather keep the rate a little bit higher because it's ten thousand dollars or five thousand, right? right? They don't want. They don't pay any points if they can't. Okay. So that increase of, of the interest rate will be yeah probably if five, they keep the years. property five to seven years then okay. Gotcha. okay so the magic number is five to seven years all right so I believe that was the final question uh, let's give a round of applause to these very knowledgeable lenders we learned a lot today thank you guys so much all right and I'm gonna put you back in the hands of Tate you guys have a great day please join us next week as we welcome City of St. Gabriel Mayor, John Wu. He will be here to give us an update on the city. Thank you everyone for joining our meeting today. Have a wonderful day. This meeting is now adjourned. <laughs>